that the snake has actually been predated on. There's a scar right here where nearly a whole chunk of its back was ripped off and eaten. But he was able to escape and he healed with no problem. It just shows you how resilient reptiles are when it comes to healing. Another red eye tree frog. Look how beautiful that frog is. These will never get old. Seeing how magnificent their eyes are, so vibrant. The legs, the feet, everything about them is so beautiful. Look at that. Beautiful little red eye tree frog. Look at the side of the body, it's almost like there's pinks. And young fertile ants actually have a yellow tail to use as a lure to catch little skinks and frogs. The thing about fertile ants is they're live bearing animals, so they're they're ovovivorous. They drop live babies, and they've been actually known to drop one of the, the largest litters of babies of any snake. There's been a tarsio pillow at the Arnell Eco Zoo that dropped over 110 babies. That's insane, right? What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome back to my wildlife. It is the night after we were snake hunting. We found that golden eyelash viper, and I wasn't feeling too good after the hike. I came down with a fever. Still a little bit sick, but it's okay. There's another snake that we found that night, and I wasn't really feeling too good to present. It was actually around this area. We bagged it so we could photograph it during the day and also present it to you during the day as well so you can see its beautiful, vibrant colors. And it's actually right here under my shirt. Let's see. There we go, look at this. Beautiful salmon-bellied racer. Look how gorgeous that snake is. And called the salmon belly racer because of that beautiful orange pigment going along its belly. And just like a black racer in North America, like Florida, like a black Florida racer, it has a similar head structure, similar body type, and also, just like the Florida black racer, this snake is known to feed on other snakes as well. Frogs, lizards, all scrumptious meals for this guy. Now, he is a diurnal species, meaning he hunts only during the day, he's only active during the day, and at night, he'll roost or sleep up in trees, way above the ground, coiled up, nice and comfy, and hopefully far away from predators. And as you can see with those big, big pupils, perfectly designed to hunt down prey in the daylight, locating any kind of movement, scouring across, telescoping, looking around, see what they can find. Awesome colubrid species, non-venomous. And another interesting fact about this species is similar to anoles and iguanas, their tail can actually break off, but it's a trade-off. They get their life, but their tail does not grow back like a lizard. It's really cool. And if you look over here, the snake has actually been predated on. There's a scar right here where nearly a whole chunk of its back was ripped off and eaten. But he was able to escape and he healed with no problem. It just shows you how resilient reptiles are when it comes to healing. Such a beautiful species. Costa Rica has been an amazing trip. We've seen so many awesome herps in the past five days. It's been amazing. I couldn't ask for a better birthday. We're gonna let this guy go. It's time to go back home. I think Kevin misses me. found ourselves a nice little baby tarsiopelo, meaning velvet, because of that beautiful velvet coloration on this animal. It's also known as the fertile lance. We actually found a very large fertile lance. My second trip out to Costa Rica, about four feet long, so this is my first neonate, or about a couple weeks old, or about a couple months old baby, probably from this year. It's super tiny, and the thing about fertile lance is they're live-bearing animals, so they're they're ovovivivorous, they drop live babies, and they've been actually known to drop one of the, the largest litters of babies of any snake. There's been a tarsio pillow at the Arnell Eco Zoo that dropped over 110 babies. That's insane, right? Now their venom is no joke. If you got bit, it's basically like acid going throughout your bloodstream, eating you from the inside out. It is a nasty bite. Even the producer of Naked and Afraid was bitten while on location looking for a place to scout out for filming and his leg was eaten away. As you guys can hear, it's a pretty busy road so let me actually get a stick. Make sure the snake doesn't get smashed. Baby Tarsio Bello. And what's really crazy is last night at four in the morning we actually found an adult. There's lots of activity on this road. We actually found an adult and when Trent went to go out and get it, because I was too sick, I felt like crap, I couldn't go out and capture it. He went out to go get it, he goes around the car, captures it, he's having a good time, goes around, as he's going around the car, we hear a big pop sound. We're like, what the hell was that? He's like, I don't know. He's focused on the snake. When he was done and he came around, there was another fertilance that was coming out trying to court that fertilance. 
so it was actually smashed two fertilances on the road at the same time last night. And another interesting thing is a very common thing here in Costa Rica is uh, certain people find these snakes and they immediately chop off their heads. Venomous, non-venomous, fertilance, cat-eyed snake, snail eater, no matter what, they chop the heads off because they don't want to take any risk of being envenomated by any snake out here. Not everyone knows every species, even know they're from here. They're not familiar. They need to get educated so they can leave these animals alone because even a snake as deadly as this wants nothing to do with me. Watch this. All it wants to do is slither away. It's not gonna come back at me. All it wants to do is slither right under Trent's leg and find a nice spot to coil up. <laughs> now remember, this snake is not an aggressive animal. It's a defensive animal. Trent is about six feet tall. This snake is that tall off the ground. How intimidating can Trent be? How intimidating can I be? We're like big apes. So this snake is very defensive, never aggressive. There's so much activity on this road. Let's, uh, right after this next car, let's move to the other side so we don't bring too much attention to this little guy. We good? I'm gonna walk. There we go. Let's go to this side, it's a bit thicker. And there's uh, some more area to work with. There we go, there we go. Oh, 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 keep him right on that wire right there. Look at that beautiful little Tarsio. Look how beautiful this little snake is. That is the coolest little fur lance I've ever seen. And what I was trying to say earlier is that was really interesting the ecosystems out here, everything connects, just like anywhere else on the planet. So when these animals are ready to drop their babies, they drop them around the wet season when all the amphibians are dropping their babies, when all the tadpoles are rearing up and becoming frogs, providing food for all the baby snakes that are hatching out or being dropped live birth. It's very unique how the rainforest works and everything's connected and timed so perfectly. Awesome. Got one baby fur lance on this trip. We're gonna let this animal go. Right over here, watch the snake disappear and camouflage before your eyes. And he's just gonna coil up right there and get real comfy. So make sure you're always careful when you're walking around piles of shrub out in any country. That's awesome. Thorsiopella, Fertilance, Bothrops, Asper. A good start to our morning, and tonight is our last night of snake hunting, so we're gonna go to a new trail. We're gonna go hunt with Miguel and see what we can find. I'm gonna try and take some more medicine and feel a little bit better, but it's okay, because there's snakes out here. All right, beautiful people, we're about to go to the Howler's Bar and Grill down at the end of the mound right here. We're gonna get something to eat, and then we're gonna have our last good hunt of the night. Last good hunt of the trip. Last one. Last yeah, one, we, get, we gotta find our uh, jumping pit viper. Corthidium. Ooh. Or Atropoides, let's do Ooh, it. Ooh, we hog nose pit viper, we've got. To, this is the last night of the trip. Usually the last night of a trip is usually when you find the coolest stuff. So it's hopefully, happen. and after eating Howler's Bar and Grill, <laughs> Not sponsored, they just hooked it up and I love their food. And with the power of their pineapple pizza, we will be able to find <laughs> all the snakes. So we'll see you guys in the woods. We're gonna do it. Where is it? Yeah. Snakes! Dogs! Ah! What's going on guys? We've made it out to the trail. We are on Silencio Trail. Out here in the mountains looking for jumping pit vipers and a pseudum, the hognose pit viper. It's raining right now, we just want to give you guys the experience of what it's like to actually walk through the jungle. So I'm going to film a little bit of the trekking. So you guys can get a good idea of what happens in between the shots and not just seeing all the good stuff. We're looking in all these roots and the buttresses of these trees, trying to see if we can find a jumping pit viper coiled up. So, give you guys a real feel of what it's like to be in the jungle with us. Here we have some walking sticks mating. 
And we also have another individual here that was just watching. And if you think he's weird, well, I'm watching him, watching them, and you're watching me watch him, watch them. Let's go find some snakes. All right, guys, it stopped raining. We're able to take out the camera for a moment and show you what we found so far. Right up over here, there seems to be either a red-eye tree frog or possibly a gliding tree frog. Right up on this bird. Oh, sweet. It's a big red-eye tree frog. Look at this. Look at that. Another red eye tree frog. Look how beautiful that frog is. These will never get old. Seeing how magnificent their eyes are, so vibrant. The legs, the feet, everything about them is so beautiful. Look at that. Beautiful little red eye tree frog. We've already found red eye tree frogs on this trip. We need to find Natropoides or Nasutum. So let me put this guy back. And he can go back to sleep. Oh, don't be on me. He's peeing on me. That could be on me. Guys, check this out. We've got a snake right in the leaf litter, right here. See if you can spot it out. It's in this general area. Try and see if you can spot that snake. It's in this general area. All right, the snake is right here. Boop, right there. Look at that. It is an adorable, teeny weeny little coffee snake. Called coffee snakes because commonly found out in coffee fields. Such a cute little snake, and they have a gorgeous little checkered pattern on their belly. Let me see if I can show you. And this one's a little dull in pattern because it's a—it's going through shit. It's a bit opaque in the eyes. But it's an adorable little coffee snake. They li live under the leaf litter. They're subterrestrial, and they love to eat little earthworms and soft-bodied invertebrates. Yummy. Let me see if I can turn this little snake around. He's so tiny. Look at him. He can just rest on my finger. Look how cute that is, a little coffee snake. Can you guys get a good look at that thing? Sorry, a little coffee snake. All right, it looks like he was going for some cover, because I guess he's done hunting for the night. I'm gonna put this coffee snake right back to where I found him. Pretty good buddy. And he just disappears underneath the leaves. Watch where you step. Come here, I'm Costa Rica. Don't want to step in there, coffee snakes. Look at those cute. Guys, let me introduce you to my new friend, Henry. Say what's up, Henry? Hop on. Hop on, Henry. No, no, Henry, Henry, Henry. Just like we, we rehearsed before we turned the camera on. Come, Henry, come. Yeah, Henry. Henry's my new friend. He's a very crazy looking cockroach we just found out here in the woods. Trent said, hey, hey Chandler, I got something for you. I said, oh, what is it? He's like, huh, you'll think it's pretty neat. And he brought it over and he's like, put out your hand. And he dropped little Henry in my hand, so he's my new buddy. Look how cool he is. Oh, sorry buddy. He's got like the head of a wasp. I don't know what species he is, but I do know he is some species of cockroach. Okay. Or do you want to go snake hunting with us? Okay, that's fine. Oh, where are you going, Henry? Henry, we didn't rehearse this part. <laughs> All right, Henry. Where are you? Whoa, what, what's that? What's that goo I just touched? Did he just squirt something on me? What just happened? Henry, what's going on here? Henry, you gonna tell me what this is? Henry! Henry! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm not picking up any more random cockroaches. I like to wash my fingers in the mud. Henry, what the f***? <laughs> Alright, let's try and find some snakes, because... It's like, what, 11.30 or 11.10 right now? We have to wake up at 7, and then we have a three-hour drive in the morning to get to San Jose to get to our flights, so we really need to kick it up and find something quick, because we got to get a rest. So, Trent, you ready? Let's get our herbs on. Let's do it. Let's get our herbs. Check your lips. Check the floor. Let's go get it. Guys, check it out. We've got another cloudy snail eater right here, crawling around, crossing this trail, looking for some new bromeliads to hunt through. Checking out the area. 
So this is like the most common snake that we've been finding out here in Costa Rica. And it seems like we are probably gonna be ending our trip with this as our last snake. So the cloudy snail eater, possibly the last snake of the trip, or you might end up finding a fertile ants on the way home because that road's been providing a lot of fertile ants late at night when we drive back to our lodge. All right, I'm gonna let this cloudy snail eater go. Here, I'll save you the trouble, buddy. Put you right where you wanted to go. It's okay, go ahead. Couldn't have asked for a better trip, right? Oh yeah, man. Pura vida. Pura vida. Pura vida. <laughs> Snakes? Frogs? Perps! What's going on guys? Check this out. I'm super pumped about this find. This very brightly colored snake might look like a very toxic snake, but it actually is not. It's a rear fang venomous colubrid. Let me see, it's right in here in this grass. See how beautiful and bright the snake is? Oh, watch out for that little head. Come here, little guy. Come here. Look at this. Look at that. This is not a coral snake. This is a juvenile musarana. Look at that. A beautiful juvenile musarana. What's really special about this snake is it actually has the capability to feed upon fertile ants a very notorious species of pit viper out here in Costa Rica responsible for the most bites of any venomous reptile. They're so common, they're found in rural areas, they're found out in the wild, so lots of bites occur. It's a very potent snake, but this, the Muzurana, feeds upon fertile ants. They don't just use their rear fangs and venom to demobilize the snake, but they also constrict. So people have actually witnessed Muzurana capturing four foot fertile ants grabbing them in, chewing and injecting the venom in, and then constricting the fertile ants. They are awesome. And they look very similar, when they're juveniles like this, they look very similar to the coffee snake. But the way you can tell the difference is that the coffee snake is much smaller, and also a baby musarana is much more brightly colored with these oranges and fiery reds. Look at that. This is such a cool little snake. I'm in no danger of that rear fang venom, as long as I am not allergic to any type of venom or bee stings or anything like that, I'm good. And as you can see, it's slightly raining outside. Just stop for a moment. But as it rains, it brings out the frogs and it brings out the snakes that feed upon the frogs. And this guy will eat the frogs, this guy will eat the snakes. And of course, if he runs into a little baby fertilance, even as a juvenile, the Muzurana will make a quick meal of the deadly snake in Central and South America. That is so cool. Look at him investigating. Nice fresh air. It's drizzling out. He's picking up scent trails, trying to find food out here. This is so cool. Such a cool species. My first ever Muzarana. Look at that beautiful colors. Such a cool species of snake. Oh, look. He, he got nice and comfortable and then started constricting my finger to make himself feel at ease and anchor himself in that little spot. It's starting to rain a lot, so I'm gonna let this guy continue on the hunt. Super stoked, my first wild musarana. We're gonna let him go. There you go, buddy. Let go of my thumb, he's constricting me. I'm not a fertile ants. That's one snake that loves to dance with the fertile ants. Dance with the fertile ants. Guys, last snake of the night. Hopefully we see something on the way home, but this is awesome. We're leaving the trail and Trent spotted this gorgeous looking fertile ants. It's targeting right now, it is very defensive. Look at the beautiful colors on that saddle on the back. Insane looking fertile ants. Gorgeous, about two feet long and it almost dipped off to the side of this hill and Trent snatched it up with the hook and got back onto the road. Good snatch, man. I really wish that was on video. Look at that, look at the beautiful colors of this fertile ants. Look at the side of the body, it's almost like there's pinks. And young fertile ants actually have a yellow tail to use as a lure to catch little skinks and frogs. And you can see that right there. He still has a little bit of yellow on that tail. So there's a little lure to help him capture his prey. Look at that, 
See him wagging that tail, him shaking it a whole lot? That will mimic a rattlesnake if he's in a leaf litter and it will add as a warning to any predators. So it's going to make a bunch of vibrations sounding just like a rattlesnake, which is pretty common for a lot of colubrids and vipers out here in Central America. Look at that. This thing is insane looking. Let me see if I can get on the stick. Oh, here we go. Hmm. You've got to be real slow because this is a very dangerous snake. See, he's targeting my hand right now because the stick does not give a heat signature. That is a beautiful bird lance. This is a perfect end to the Costa Rica trip. A gorgeous looking bird lance, probably a year and a half old, nice and healthy, really, really pretty. And we're gonna end up letting it go. Pura Vida, Costa Rica. This is the best birthday trip I've had yet. And it can only get better. I'll see you guys on the next one. Stay beautiful. Be brave. Stay gangster. I'll see you on the next one.